Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you all here. It uh, looks like a nice big crowd. Obviously, the, the topic has brought you all in, which is good to see. Now, this, of course, is part two. This is where we get quite serious. Okay, we're going to get right into the subject material. You've got a little bit of handouts there to have a bit of a read as well, a bit of bedtime reading for you this evening. And that covers a few of the uh, animals that I'll be uh, covering today. So if you want to know a little bit more, you'll find them all there. If you need any more handouts, please come and see me and I'll grab some more for you. But we do have a lot to get through in the next hour, so I'm just going to dive straight into it. So first of all, we're going to talk about cetaceans. Cetaceans are whales, dolphins, porpoises, stuff like that. And in particular, whales, because that's what we're going to see for the next few days. Now, they're split into two groups, baleen whales and tooth whales. Baleen whales filter feed zooplankton, very, very small krill, little tiny animals, and tons and tons of it per day. The, bale the tooth whales, of course, have teeth, and they're more predators. Now, the most common whale that you're going to see, of course, is the humpback whale, an absolutely spectacular whale at that. The two most common behaviours you'll see are breaching and fluking. Now, breaching is what you see here with the jumping out of the water. We thought for many years it was actually to get rid of parasites and stuff like that. These days we know it's just to impress the ladies and for fun. Okay? Now, I've got a little sound for you as well. This is the sound of a humpback whale singing to get a mate. So, that's it. But, I've got a better one later. That's kind of the standard song that you'll hear. And this is a picture of fluking, of course. Generally, after a fluking event, that means they're diving nice and deep and you won't see them for a little while. Now, to distinguish if you've seen a humpback whale when you're looking out from horizons or out from the pool deck, you'll see a serrated tail, serrated edge, and their, their uh, pectoral fins, the side fins, are one third the length of the body. They're absolutely huge and also serrated as well. That pretty much gives it away that you're watching a humpback whale. Now, the red dots indicate major population centres, but they do migrate, uh, and they do the largest, uh, the longest migration of any mammal, uh, from Antarctica in the southern hemisphere to the equator, and back down again every year, and the northern hemisphere has a similar population as well. They do not feed in the tropics, they feed in the, uh, around Antarctica, and they come up to the tropics just to uh, basically carve live up to about 50 years is the standard lifespan for a humpback whale. Now, the individual uh, populations, you have a northern and southern hemisphere population. For many years we didn't think they crossed, but in the last 10 years actually we have recorded a few individuals that did cross the equator, go join the northern hemisphere for a while, pop back down to the southern hemisphere a few years later. So, absolutely majestic creatures and definitely I hope we see a few. They should all be down in Antarctica, but there might be a few still hanging around. Now, a really good chance we will see one of these whales, the sperm whale. And there's a huge population just off New Zealand. That's why I think we've got a very good chance of seeing them. Grow to about 18 metres in length and they have a very distinctive blow. Uh, when they come to the surface, their uh, blow is sideways. And so that's very, very unique and easy way to uh, know that you're looking at a sperm whale. Of course, famous from the Moby Dick novels. Okay? And uh, it's a really, truly unique whale and it has its own family because of its unique uh, things and in biology for an individual animal to have its own family is a pretty special thing. It's the largest tooth whale and it has just teeth on the bottom, the top are, are in the gums actually and up to 20 centimetres long for each teeth so they're quite large. Um, but the most amazing thing about sperm whales is their diving ability. They have been recorded up to three kilometres deep but their average dive is just a really nice casual dive between one to two kilometres in depth. That's their average dive and that's where they feed on all sorts of things but uh, the most common would be the big giant squid. That's what they're hunting for which, funnily enough, is also about 18 metres in length so it's quite a bit of a jewel that they have. The bizarre shape is also one thing that attracts attention and that's the huge big head that they have filled with spermaceti oil which was highly prized for uh, well, mainly cosmetics and actually perfumes was one of the most common uses it was before we started to synthesise the oils. 
Population in the 1970s, 1.9 million. Today, about 300,000. We have no idea why, and they are continuing still to decline. We really don't know why. It's, it's, um, if you have any grandchildren or, or children who are starting in uh, marine biology, tell them to study sperm whales. We need as many people as possible. Lifespan, between 60 and 70 years. How you'll see them? Well, after diving to one to two kilometres in depth, you're going to be pretty tired. So they're going to sit on the surface for a good 10 minutes just catching their breath and you'll also see that sideways blow. That's how you're going to tell you've seen a sperm whale. The red dots indicate the largest populations in the world and in particular, right when we go from Christchurch to Wellington across there is pretty much the largest population of sperm whales in the world. So you've got a good chance of seeing them on deck uh, in between those two locations. So, that's the sperm whale. <laughs> Lastly, one that we will also have a good chance of seeing is the orca. Not technically a whale, it's actually a dolphin. But uh, most people think sharks are the apex predators of the ocean. You are incorrect. The orca is the apex predator. Nothing eats the orca and the orca eats everything. Characteristics, well, I think you'll all be able to tell if you saw an orca. They're pretty uh, unique. Black and white, very, very easy to see. And the dorsal fin, the top fin, is huge. It's really, really tall, sometimes up to a metre and a half long. So that really gives it away that you're, uh, that you're talking about a, um, a orca or a killer whale. Now, fearsome predators, because they can tackle everything. Absolutely anything, you name it, they can eat it. And generally, if it's too big, they'll work in a pack to, uh, to uh, get that prey under control. Seals, dugongs, all species of fish, turtles, uh, seven species of seabirds, and all the cetaceans, including the blue whale, the largest creature ever to live on this planet, is, uh, is basically a prey item of the killer whale. So it's a very, very, I've got a lot of respect for these guys. Um, and of course, their hunting strategies, I'm sure you all see, um, are quite, you've seen before with them attacking uh, seals and stuff, they're very, very intelligent creatures when it comes to attacking uh, their prey. And here we have, hopefully, yes. So it's a good idea when you're on the beach in New Zealand just to keep an eye out at the ocean. Uh, <laughs> just keep that in mind. Because <laughs> there's a lot of seals there and you could be a seal as well. Okay. So that's the orca. Now, of course, let's get on to the, the subject at hand, which is, of course, the sexual reproduction of marine creatures. Now, I did say that I had a better sound effect for you, and I'm going to play it for you uh, right now. Now, this was recorded off cans from a male trying to impress a female, and unfortunately, all the males were getting really, really good at their songs, so this guy had to get a better song to impress the female. So he came up with this one, and even I'm impressed. <laughs> Please fill in the subtitles yourself. Now it actually goes on for 20 minutes, so I might just cut it there, but you get the idea. They have to impress the females by singing. And every year the songs get better and better. It's quite, it's quite amazing. Now when we talk about whale love, well, it's pretty simple. Every two years uh, they'll get together and the female decides which bull chasing her will be the successful one. So it's all about the female. Female gets to choose which partner she would like. Um, now the most common method, as I was just saying, for the bulls to woo the female is by singing and they will make it bigger and better every year, all the time, to impress the females. So they've got a, a good musical ear, the old females. All right, the three most common questions. We, we briefly touched on these, yes, um, not yesterday, the day before, and now we're going to get straight into it. Now I do apologise, some of these slides I will read verbatim just because it's the most succinct way to get the information across. Now before we start, anthropomorphism. Anybody heard of this word before? A few people? It's really, you've got to get into it before you, <laughs> before you start studying animals because so many people put human traits onto animals and it's something that you just cannot do. We have human traits and each animal has their own particular traits. As soon as we start trying to compare them, we will just confuse ourselves. Okay? So animals are animals, humans are humans. You've got to split them apart.